what's going on guys welcome back to the channel i know it's not a reaction <laughs> okay this is my official review for the demon slayer mugen or mugen train movie that um finally got a chance to go and see it and i took that chance and i went and saw this movie now let me tell you guys something. If you if this is playing at a theater near you and you can find the money to go and play this to play this. I I'm telling you right now, go ahead and spend that money is going to be well spent. I went and I saw this movie in IMAX um it was a brilliant experience. It's actually the first time I've ever seen a movie in IMAX. I've went to see movies in 3D and other stuff, but I've, I said, let me go see this in IMAX, see what the experience is like. I mean, mainly it's prettier and it's louder in the theater. That's pretty much that's pretty much what IMAX is, in my opinion. It's prettier. It's like you're watching a big screen, a huge screen, 4K, maybe bigger. I don't know what the resolution is on that screen um but it's like that it's like watching just a big screen 4k very clear hd top notch quality and it's louder <laughs> and it's louder that's pretty much all imax is you know um uh i have had you know our theater experiences but never in imax so um, didn't bode well for me because I didn't really eat anything before I went to the movie theater. So I was kind of stuck in there. Didn't want to move. But the movie really carried. You know what I'm saying? It really carried. So I'm going to talk about some non-spoilers. Some non-spoiler stuff. My impressions of the movie. And then I'm going to get into the spoiler on the second half of the video. Right? My, uh, my initial video that I did and I posted... Um, is not the official review. This is my initial reactions of what I thought of the movie. But I'm going to go through the steps of what I usually look for in any medium that I watch. Right? Is rewatchability, video, spectacle, animation, whatever category you want to put that in. And, and, uh, and of course, soundtrack, audio design, whatever. Right? You, you know the rules. Right? So, the first thing I'm going to start with is the animation i talked a little bit about it in my initial reaction of it that the animation in this beautiful not gonna spend too much time talking about the animation because um it's 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 ufotable they are you know what i'm saying if you look at any other thing that ufotable has done they are just incredible when it comes on to add to their style of animation it just looks different very colorful um very precise with their animation also but i did have a little bit of i talked about it last night but i said it's good enough and it's the cgi in the movie it's very it as i said it was cgi that was very obvious but it was good enough to carry the movie they like to use cgi for their background i think Maybe I'm the only person that ha that maybe have this problem, but the effect that they used for the um for the demon that was on top the demon that was added to the one that we saw at the end of season one that got the power from Muzan, right? Um that demon, the one that's over my left shoulder right here, the effect that they used on her uh, and I always think it's a girl. It's a it's a dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? I I don't know. I don't know if it's a girl demon or 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 a male demon. I don't know what it is. Okay, but um, incredible, incredible um, what they did with the characters in this movie. But the anime, the CGI that they use for the effect um of it. I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm trying to choose my words carefully here in this part of the video. Um, so the effect that they used there wasn't, it wasn't, it didn't sit where it looked like meat. <laughs> it looked like meat. 
but it was it was okay i understood what they were trying to go for it, you know what i'm saying with the tentacle effect and all of that i i get what they were trying to do um but i don't think it was a hundred percent agreeable for me so that's the only issue i had everything else they did in this movie as in animation wise whether it's for a fight or whether it's for slow moments whether it's for the, the 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 um the part the the other parts whether they're walking or drawing their sword or whatever it is everything else was done basically to perfection like if i was supposed to drop points for that little bit it wouldn't be much it would be like a point one <laughs> you know what i'm saying of points that i would drop for that because everything else animation wise in this movie is perfect okay so as I said, spend money, go see this movie. You won't regret it. Okay, so audio design, my God. The first soundtrack in this movie, I heard I was like, okay, okay. They on to something now, I'm ready. You know what I'm saying? The OST in this movie is top notch. They did not play the season one opener. I was hoping that I would have at least get to hear that that um because it's just synonymous with demon slayer at this point you know what i'm saying <laughs> whatever that was <laughs> okay you guys know what i'm talking about season one opener was a banger you know what i'm saying one of the best openings that i've ever heard in anime history you know what i'm saying and i was hoping that they would have played it at some point either during the movie or even for the credit roll, but they didn't. But I was fine with it. I was fine because all of these tracks that I'm hearing for the first time in Demon Slayer, they played some of them. Like, they played the one, I think it was in episode 19 of season one, that one that was playing when, um, when he went up against the, um, was it, uh, I think that guy was a, I can't remember what he was. I think, it, was he a lower three? Was he a lower three? I know he wasn't in the in in the, in the higher. Um, I'm trying to remember what he was. I think he was a wasn't he a, like a lower six or something like that. I don't remember, but he he definitely I don't remember. I think his name was Rui, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly. Um, that Tanjiro was fighting. Um, that soundtrack that was playing during the the, the best fight of season one right <sighs> that soundtrack man beautiful beautiful soundtrack they played that they had different renditions of it throughout the movie um and i have to say man i enjoyed it very much the soundtrack is definitely something especially in the imax theater it just sounded really really good because you heard certain things wind blowing and stuff like that is it, it, it's like a treaty arena that you're sitting in when it comes down to the sound in the imax movie and it's loud <laughs> yeah um so let's talk about rewatchability this is definitely a movie that i would watch again hands down would watch again i'm definitely once it drops on dvd i'm going to be doing a reaction to it when it comes out i'm definitely going to do that i'm not even kidding like i, I am have to watch this movie one more time probably won't go back to the theater to go see it but i definitely want to own this movie on dvd um we also i also know that this is canon it's a canon movie so everything is straight out of the manga everything straight out of them they may have added certain things to it i'm sure they added certain things i have not read the manga i don't know but i'm pretty sure they added little little stuff here and there to kind of create better context or whatever to whatever um you know just to add a little tidbit to it um but everything that happened in it is absolute canon um so First time, as I said before, first time I'm actually watching an anime movie in the theater. And also, first time I'm watching an anime movie. Well, not the first time. Th this is like the second time I'm watching an anime movie that's actually canon. Which is, um, it was Naruto the last and this one. So, it was absolutely a great experience. Now, um, as we are here 10 minutes into the video, if you 
don't want to be spoiled and you want to go watch and you want to go watch the movie do not go any further in this video past the sound of my voice saying spoiler warning okay the spoiler warning if you want to know nothing about the movie okay don't go past this point okay i'm done now we're going into spoiler territory so let's talk about the movie okay tanjiro was not and, I, and the reason why i'm starting with this is because um tanjiro just wasn't the star he was not the star of the movie but we all know that he's our protagonist he got his moments to shine you know what i'm saying he got his moments to shine he went up against the demon he took out the demon as i said over my left shoulder him and inosuke took out that demon zenitsu got his chance to shine in the train protecting um nezuko right and this movie i have to say um you know it's it, it started off in a way where i was like okay typical demon slayer you know what i'm saying kind of a slow start you know what i'm saying not getting into it but it really picked up after about five minutes <laughs> five minutes into the movie and it was like none stop not necessarily action but it, it was like the, the director said action and we just get right into it you know what i'm saying um so the power of this this demon um i don't remember the name okay i don't remember the names of these demons they don't matter they're all gonna die at some point so <laughs> i don't need to remember their names the only demon that i think i should remember their name is is muzan like because he's the don data he's the one <laughs> you know what i'm saying and he has all of the he has the 12 you know the upper six the lower six and, and and um he has the upper six the lower six and the rest of idiots that are running around you know don't know what's happening so um so yes we got introduced to the flame hashira flame hashira rengoku this dude right here my guy this nigga right here he was the star of the movie. He was the star of the movie. He was the star of this arc that they made into a movie. He was the star. Bruh. We have seen Hashira's in action. They ain't nothing to play with. But my God. <laughs> Ren Goku. My guy. The man deserves a stand in evasion. Ufotable did not they did not waste any moment that this guy was on screen and a lot of things that they did during this you know the, the whole dream state situation that this demon over my left shoulder created <laughs> the dream state and put tanjiro and all of them in a dream state so they it, it was um basically was trying to kill them in their sleep right so send these other humans that wanted they wanted to die because they were probably you know in they had these these um these um terminal diseases right and they just wanted to die you know and the demon took advantage of that and tell them if you do this i will put you to sleep um or kill you whatever the situation is so you or i don't know if they probably would turn him into a demon or, or something of the sort i don't know so um so that was the situation there they I, I don't want to talk about the, the entire movie i just want to talk about the high points of the movie the story and what we were following throughout this arc right was very brilliantly written and i won't say that often about um animes that are like this it's a very straightforward story there's no mystery to it we know what the goal is the goal is to kill muzan because he, muzan killed tanjiro's family that's the goal there's there's nothing else there's no side missions <laughs> you know what i'm saying we just we get into it we need to kill the 12 and then get to muzan that's what we need to do how strong will tanjiro be when he gets to muzan we don't know but he's definitely better be a powerhouse because muzan is no play and and this movie provided some power scaling too because 
of the final fight because after they defeated this demon yo my guy i thought the movie was over when they broke the train down defeated this ratchet over here i thought the movie was over but it wasn't guess who showed up a upper third the upper third the upper third the upper three whatever his name is as i said i don't need to remember their names they're just bro junior talking about instant regeneration bruh this man went up against rengoku ahashira bro and the reason why i say that rengoku is the star of the movie is because when you learn about his background which is another thing they did well in this movie is showing us who he is what his family is like um it's just amazing the final i don't know how long that fight was going on for i want to say probably like the last 20 to maybe maybe 20 to 30 minutes we got rengoku versus the upper third and the upper third bruh they didn't even say like they send the upper like the upper six they send the upper third bro the upper three halfway through the number one demon under muzan this dude was a former martial art another thing that i was actually thinking of too another thing that i was actually thinking of because of the conversation he was having with with with, with rengoku and was saying why don't you become a demon you're like you're like so good you would be so much better as a demon you know invincible you know what i mean because he's like you're near you're right there to become like your greatest pot potential like you should just become a demon and rengoku stood his ground and was like i'll never become a demon blah 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 right but my guy when i tell you that this guy was powerful when he showed up i was like and the 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 you know that the his rank is on his eyeball right and it said up a third i literally i literally was like oh shit because we know what you know what i'm saying the demon this this crybaby above my head right here right was the lower one right basically no hashira has ever killed anyone in the upper six so the upper six has been going on they've been living for hundreds of years nobody no hashira has ever killed a, a demon in the upper six so at least from what we know right so i'm looking at it and i'm like yo this it's about to go down hopefully rengoku can hold his own right but bruh shh. i don't know man i don't know i have a feeling that maybe tanjiro is probably going to be the first one to take out a demon in the, in the in the in the upper six i mean if they write the story like that it'll be too obvious though um I do think that the guy that's watching over Tanjiro could do it. I don't remember his name. The the other dude that's basically his sibling student. So is is like his sibling his sibling student. The same guy trained both of them, right? So I'm looking at it from that perspective and wondering who is strong enough of these Hashiras to take out our upper six. We don't know. It's the first time we actually saw a Hashira go all out. In, Rengo in Rengoku, and he died. He, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you guys this, man. I was in the theater. I was crying, my guy. I was crying. Tears were coming down. I was, it was wetting up my mask and everything. It was a mess. <laughs> okay, this movie. If you go through this movie and you don't cry, you probably either watch. You probably have read the manga, know what happened already. Or you're just a, a tough dude, bro. But for me, like, I know I'm an emotional dude. My, you know, it's not the first time I would have 
cried watching anime so i know myself i knew that some of those moments was gonna hit me in a certain way you know what i'm saying when rengoku was dying and he saw his mom you know what i'm saying and he asked his mom did i do good and his mom said you're good man you're good because his mom told him is is like there's a reason why some people are born strong and some are born weak is because the strong ones got to protect the weak ones and that message is very profound you know goes beyond just words speak being spoken on screen it's it's life in general you know what i'm saying like you as a strong person got to protect the weak you got to look out for the weaker person as a older brother or older sister you got to look out for your siblings that are younger than you you know what i'm saying and th that's just how that's just how it is you know what i mean so the messages in this movie was definitely there some of them hit so hard i remember one scene you know and then and then this this upper third after one of the best moments in the anime for that for that matter one of the best moments in 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 this movie when he was trying to leave because the sun was coming up so he was trying to leave and rengoku is like yo rengoku ha this dude has his fist through rengoku's body bro like there's no way i expected rengoku to, to survive this but he was alive and he was like, yo, you're not going anywhere. We gonna wait until the sun come up. And he was holding on. And dude had to, he basically had to cut his own arms off. Well, they didn't cut it off. He just break his, broke his own arm off because he can instantly generate, right? To get away. Ran away like a little bitch, right? That's what he did. Um, Tanjiro tried to run after him, but Tanjiro was injured. I know a lot of people, I heard, I heard people talking outside of the theater was like, how you just going to get stabbed by a little needle like that? You know what I'm saying? But people don't understand. I've never been stabbed before. I've never been stabbed before, but I can tell you because I've seen, you know what I'm saying? The damage that a little stab can do. You know what I'm saying? Cause people look at it and they're like, oh, it was just a little thing. It was like. It was like you get stuck with like uh, I want, it's not even a needle, it's thicker than a needle, but not but, you know what I'm saying? It's not like he, he got stabbed with a knife. You get what I'm saying? And he got stabbed with it, and people don't understand. If you stab somebody, no matter how little that um thing is, if you stab somebody in the right place, you can cripple them. You can cripple them. You could let them bleed a lot. You, you don't know. You don't understand. Even though Tanjiro used his breathing to close close up the wound, you don't know how bad it is. You can't look at it and be like, oh, you got stabbed with a little thing and blow, and you couldn't get up and help Rengoku. I'm like, even though Rengoku told him stay out of the fight. And a lot of times people look at things from a, from a perspective of, you know what I'm saying, because they like Rengoku didn't have to die. You know, because, um, oh, this and that and whatever, Tanjiro was, what, what should have gotten up and helped him and tried to help him. Rengoku told him specific, how you gonna jump into a fight where you can't even see the dudes moving? Bro, literally, Inosuke was there sitting. Maybe Tanjiro could have smelled them, but Inosuke was literally standing there. You know, Inosuke loves jump into stuff. And he was standing there and he's like, I know for a fact I can't jump into this fight. He wasn't injured, right? I'm not saying that Inosuke is, is strong like Tanjiro. You get what I'm saying? But at the same time, yo, these dudes, the upper the, the, the upper three and the the upper three and Rengoku, what they were fighting so fast, bro. You couldn't even see them. You just see swords. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't they um the demon didn't have a sword but that's all you could see is just the sword flash and rengoku's sword and flames right that's all you could see when they show it in normal normal speed you, they, they, they're moving so fast your eyes can't see it but they slowed it down the animation was so beautiful during that fight man and i'm glad that they kind of showcased a demon that was using martial arts like hand to hand it was crazy and the moves were done just done so well. They have techniques. Um, I don't even think he used this blood art. 
at all. I don't think he used. I don't even think he used. Or maybe it was called something else. I don't know. But I don't remember him using his blood art. I think he was just doing regular moves, it seems like. But he's such a powerful demon. I don't even know how they're going to take out these upper six. They're crazy powerful, dude. Especially if they, they're giving them that kind of trouble. You can't imagine Muzan, bro. Like, that's going to... I don't even know. All I'm saying is, I can get hype over this anime because... Um... You know what I'm saying? It reminds me of how I feel when I watch Dragon Ball. You get what I'm saying? As I was saying in my initial reaction is that it's not that I don't like Dragon Ball. It's that the fact that when you're going to talk about story, that's just not the anime for you. If you love to see anime fights, Dragon Ball is where you that's that's your go-to. You know what I'm saying? The 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 author, the mangaka he, he threw story out the window a long time ago. It's beat this guy, who's next? You get what I'm saying? That That's what it is. Beat this guy, who's next? <laughs> that's what Dragon Ball is about. And Demon Slayer is kind of moving at that pace at this point where, where it's like when it ends, it's going to end. It's not going to continue like Dragon Ball. Maybe, maybe, we don't know. If there's going to be new people coming in. But I think maybe, you know, this is just going to be a one-off story. That there's going there's not going to be any spin-offs or anything like that. Because once you defeat Muzan, like, who are you going to introduce? Like, Muzan doesn't look like he answers to anybody or anything of the sort. So, um, I don't see it going further than that. But other than that, man, this movie was absolutely incredible. Um, dude ran away like a bitch. Didn't want to... Want to just, like... You're not, you know, Tanjiro was screaming at him, um, and I, I was like, yo, stop, bro, you making me cry, you know what I'm saying, like, it, it was so heartfelt when he was screaming at a demon, Is like, stop running away like a bitch, Rengoku is the one that, that won, you lost, because he was running, he was running from the fight, he was all cocky about everything until he realized, oh, Dawn is about to come, you know what I mean, and... He had to break off and, and run out. And another thing too, Tanjiro let threw his sword at him, and it's stuck in his body. Like, you gonna get a new sword again? You know, he's gonna have to get a new sword. So, yes, that is my absolute impressions of this movie. It was awesome. It was an awesome ride. Rengoku was the star of this movie, hands down. Even though we lost him. You know what I'm saying? He had some very, very good words to say to Tanjiro, encouraging to him and tell him, keep working and get better and become a Hashira. So it was, a, a, you know what I'm saying? And he, he said some things also about Nezuko. And I tell him, it's like, I accept her. You know what I'm saying? I saw her fighting for humans in the train. I accept her. She's officially a part of the Demon Slayer Corps. So that really, man, he had a speech at the end of this movie that, like, if you don't crack and no tears at all come down when you hear this man speak, the voice acting, I talked about it in my initial reaction to about the voice acting, is really the thing that really carried this movie, like, from start to finish. The voice acting was absolutely incredible. They did an incredible job for something they couldn't see. You know what I'm saying? And was just basically like, oh, these are your lines. Deliver the lines. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not like they create the movie first. Um, You know what I'm saying? Usually, you know, when it comes on to voice acting, I believe they go in and um, they don't have like the animation or nothing yet. They have an idea of what the story is going to be. And they just have to imagine the scene in their head and deliver the lines. You get what I'm saying? And then they create the animation and match match it up with the with the with the um with the words or you know what I'm saying with the audio. So um uh, unless they do it the other way, but usually that's how it goes for animated films. Um, you know, you get the actors to come in, do the lines, you know what I'm saying, and then you add it to the video or <laughs> whatever. So um so, yeah, man, absolutely incredible voice acting, man. They did an excellent job of just, they knocked it out of the park. And Sony got another one. Sony got another one. This was 
a um, Shueisha. I think Shueisha is the name of the studio with Ufoldable. And um, what's the name of the other studio? Um, I'm trying to remember it. I I'm trying to remember. It's three studios that came together to create this movie. And they did an, uh, an excellent job. Um, yes. It's, it's a great movie. Go see it. Go see it. I don't have much else to say. I definitely want to watch this movie again. Because that final sequence. I want to see this baby in 4K. Okay? <laughs> okay. Bruh. That final scene. Rengoku versus the upper third. Was just. It was a chef's kiss man. Mwah. It was beautiful. It was well done. It was perfection. I am going to give this movie a 9.9 .9 out of 10. It was just awesome. It was just awesome. I'm done. Go see the movie if you got a chance to see it or you want to wait till it comes out on DVD or when you can watch it for free on some, you know, site somewhere because you know how we do in the anime community. You know what I'm saying? I, <laughs> that's what we do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, as I said, this, I've watched tons of anime movies um, and I've paid for probably three. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's just because we still have to wait like almost a year to see these movies anyways when because they drop in japan and like in the summer and then we don't get to see them until like next the next year like march april you get what i'm saying so it, it always takes like a while like eight months for it to get to the west so they have to wait. So, in any case, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, I don't want to make this more than 30 minutes. And we are already over the 30-minute mark. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much. Go watch the Demon Slayer movie, man. You'll enjoy yourself. Um, highly recommended from me. If you have not seen it, if you have not seen it yet, you're probably not supposed to be on this video right now because I just talked about the entire movie, pretty much. But there's still other stuff that I didn't that I did not talk about. Um, really. Um, but I talked about the main exciting things about this movie that they did well and exceptional and unexpected. Later. I'm out. Peace.